Place Hogan and Sanich yet. It's a rail and supply center, and we'll be heading for the main depot at the east end of town. We can expect heavy fighter and any aircraft resistance. The weather is overcast. We expect little change in overall conditions. The ceiling will be under 10,000 feet. Lieutenant. <laughs> Sir. Just take a seat, Lieutenant. Any seat. Yes, sir. Our secondary target will be the ammo dumps at Danton V. Here. Now, we will hit the secondary with incendiaries whether or not we hit the primary target. In other words, today there will be two targets, gentlemen. The flares of the day for fighter support will be red, green, green. Coming off the target, red, green, red. Are there any questions? All right, let's go to war. Thank you, Major. Uh, sir. Yes, Lieutenant. Uh, come to think of it, I guess I do have a question at that. Oh, do you? Uh, yes, sir. You uh, General Savage? Oh, that's right. I am General Savage, Lieutenant. Well, I'm mighty proud to know you, sir. I'm Lieutenant Andy Lathrop, your replacement from the 912th Bomb Group. I'm your new bombardier. You are my new bombardier? Yes, sir. You are the best man available. Sir? Come on, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Twelve o'clock high. A QM production. Starring Robert Lansing. Also starring John Larkin and Frank Overton. With guest stars Peter Fonda and Jill Howard. Tonight's episode, The Sound of Distant Thunder. Red Robins. IP dead ahead. Flag is extremely heavy. Looks like they knew we were coming. Pilots and navigator. Mason, what's that noise down there? Sir? Well, I... Mason, were you playing a harmonica? That, that was me, General. Lathrop? Yes, sir. Lathrop, we're about to begin the bomb run. Yes, sir, I know, sir. I'm all set. I was just rendering a course for Lieutenant Mason here. You get on that bomb site, Lathrop. Yes, sir. Right. It's your airplane. I just hope he gives it back when he's through playing with it.
commandeered the pilot. This bed of turkey shoot, we'd have won the whole shebang. Plane's all yours, General. Oh, well, thank you very much, Lieutenant. All right, let's get out of here. and stay alert. Red Robin 1, 2, all Red Robins. Red Robin 2 will take over. Good luck on your secondary target. Approximately seven and a half miles northwest of Lumiere. My navigator is dead. I can't give you an exact fix. was taken by the captain of the catch that picked him up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's too bad that nobody ever checked Lathrop about as a pilot. He probably would have brought the bird in, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to see this lad properly rewarded, Frank. Frank, he will be. He's a remarkable boy, Wally. Remarkable isn't the word. This is the funniest kid I ever saw. What do you mean, funny, Kaiser? Hmm? Oh, Lathrop. Oh, it's just funny. I like him. A big gangling clown. You know, I don't think a man should be judged by the way he holds his fork or the way he combs his hair. Oh, Frank, come on now. You know what I see when I look at Lathrop Wiley? I see me. All right, maybe I wasn't as clumsy, maybe I wasn't as courageous. But me. Right off the farm, big grand harmonica, the works. Well, I'll admit you had a couple of rough edges, Frank, but you certainly were never a clown. No, I wasn't a clown, not to you, Wiley. That's my point. You, you took the time, the trouble, to help me, to push me when I needed pushing. I don't know this boy, Frank, but I do know you. Now, you've got to be two different human beings. Okay. 
You didn't see that kid in the plane. You don't know what I know about him. Wally, I'll make you a bet. I'll bet you $100 to 10 that Lathrop winds up commanding a group. With you pushing him? With the helping pushing, yes. But Frank, this is not a block of marble that you're carving. This is a man. Okay. Was it a bet? All right, if you want it to be a bet, then it's a bet. And I hope you win. <laughs> Andy, your mush is boiling. How many times I gotta tell you guys it ain't mush, it's grits. Andy, you really been eating that stuff all your life? Sure thing. That's how come I got such a gentle disposition. You guys keep eating that powdered mess over in the chow hall, and boy, it's gonna tear down your whole constitution. Hey, huh? How's your words, gentlemen? I sure am glad to see you up and around again, General. Well, thank you, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. How's the leg, sir? Oh, it's, uh, it's fine. It's a little bit stiff, Major. Uh, Lieutenant, I'd like to speak to you for a few minutes. Well, sure thing, sir. Uh, we were just on our way to Chow, sir. Thanks, sir. Well, what's, what's this? You've got, uh, got your own private kitchen going here. Well, uh, that's my grits, sir. Uh, See, I got kind of a sweet tooth for grits. Well, let me put out another bowl. Oh, thanks. I just had chow. Oh, yes, sir. Tell I haven't had a chance to talk to you since the mission. Well, uh, no, sir. I, I'm mighty embarrassed about that, too. See, I, I did come by the hospital two or three times, but, uh, but you're always signing papers to get an x-ray or something. Mm. Well... Lieutenant, you, you saved my life. And I'm under more obligation to you than I can repay. Obligation? Well, no, General. You'd have done the same for me. I've recommended you for a DFC. A... And a first lieutenancy. Well, I, I sure do appreciate that, sir. But, I mean, it ain't necessary, you know. Uh, were you going off the base tonight? Well, um, yes, sir. It could be put off. No, no. I thought if you'd stop by my office, I could give you some books on tactics I'd like you to read. Yes, sir. And don't look so worried, Lieutenant. You might find that you enjoy them. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Aircraft out, 18 back, sir. Another good one. Uh, what about the target? Right on the button. No sweat with later pleading. Has he learned any new tunes? Well, he's sort of dropped the harmonica, General. I haven't heard him play anything for quite a while, even around the quarters. Yeah, I guess he's growing up. Well, at least he's changing, sir. Yeah. Lieutenant Lathrop. Sir. Lieutenant, I hear you had another good run today. Congratulations again. Well, thank you, sir. Lieutenant, are you, uh, feeling all right? You look like you've lost a little weight. Oh, no, sir, General. I feel fine. Why don't... Why don't you take the bus into London tonight? I think you're about due for a pass. 
Yes, sir. That time he let up on him. Al well, Smitty, all work and no play might make Lathrop a dull bombardier. Even General Pigmalion knows that. Let's go. Yes, ma'am. What do you call this here again? That shandy. It's like lemon squash. Very tasty. Are you sure you wouldn't like something alcoholic? Well, to tell the truth, ma'am, I ain't much of a drinker. Then what are you doing here, Lieutenant? Well, I, I heard the music. And I kind of like to be around people, so... Here. I'll try this. Whiskey? It's cognac. You... Oh, that's good. <laughs> I, I was going to tell you to sip it. <laughs> Mary. Mary! Yes, Dad. Well, say, listen. Um, I'll, I'll just keep the rest of those. Yes, Dad. before he starts a riot. All right, ladies and gentlemen, back to the fun and games, eh? Come on now, get cracking again on the old Joanna. Whoops. Come on, Lieutenant. 
About nine left feet. Even for me, that's, that's a couple too many. Well, I guess I got you into this. The least I can do is clean you up some. We mustn't let those MPs see you like this, must we? Well, I ain't the ain't the MPs I'm worried about. General. What general? My general. Boy, he sure wouldn't take kindly to. Oh, but he's not here, so I ain't gonna worry about him. And what's the matter now? Why, well, I, I was just thinking about your name. You know what Mary sounds like? What? Sounds like a barrel-legged girl with a ribbon in her hair wading through a Tennessee creek. Well, well that's where I'm from, Tennessee. You'd like it there. You can take your shoes off in Tennessee and you can stretch out and relax. And nobody bothers you and tries to make you into something you're not. Lieutenant, I really think you should go. Hey, this is uh, it's a real nice room. Very friendly. You live here? We live out there with a the happy noise. We only eat and sleep here. Well, who's we? Me and my dad. Well, you, you ain't married then. No, not now. You were married? Lieutenant... Andy. Andy, I have to go into the other room. What happened? What? With the marriage. Oh, really? Oh, for heaven's sake, it ended. He was killed. He flew up in his new shiny spitfire, and he never came back. I don't even know where the body is. And I don't even have a grave to decorate. Mary, I... Please go away. Will you please get out? Mary, I got the flap in his tongue between Memphis and Knoxville. Now, everybody knows that. Now, they don't, they don't pay me no mind. I, well, I, ju I just forgot. I, I thought I was back home, John, with a neighbor gal. I wouldn't hurt you. Lieutenant. But, Mary, you know, I, I can listen real good, too, if I put my mind to it. Now, it's not good for you to hold all that grief in. So you talk about that, and I'll listen. It'll help. Can't you understand? I don't want to talk about it. And I don't want your help. And I don't want to care about you. I just can't afford it. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll go now. Oh. Whew. Ah. I'll just... I'll just rest here a second. Be all right.
so you're still alive. I was thinking of putting a mirror under your nose to see if you were still breathing. Mm. Here. What's that? Blood? <laughs> Tomato juice. Drink it, it'll do you good. And if you take my advice, you'll get out very soon, because my father said he'd skin you alive if he found you here. Huh. What time is it? Early. Just after five. Five? Yes, why? I gotta get back to the base by six. But oh. the first bus doesn't go until eight. Well, that's all right. I'll catch a ride. Oh, boy. Don't worry about me. I'll make it. Bye, Lieutenant. Mary. Well, get in. But I, how, how come? Will you get in before I come to my senses and turn around and go back to my poor snoring father, whom I never should have left in the first place? Yeah, you will move over. I'll drive. Honestly, I don't know which is worse, a lost puppy or a helpless American. Well, I thought you were so eager to get back to the base. You know, I was, uh, I was planning on coming back, really. Very minute I got my next pass. And what's that supposed to mean? That I was afraid I'd never see you again? Are you trying to infer that I was chasing you, Lieutenant? Yeah. <laughs> well, I never. I like that, I must say. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, General, here we come. Is, uh... uh... Go right on in, Lieutenant. He's expecting you. Yes, sir. Come in. Sir, you stand at attention, Lieutenant. You know what time it is, Lieutenant? I believe it's 9.30, sir. General, let me tell you what happened. Now, you let me tell you what happened, Lieutenant. This morning at 6 o'clock, General Crow arrived on the base. And he was nice enough to commend me on having the finest lead bombardier in the wing. We thanked the general, and I asked him if he would like to meet this bombardier person. And the general said that he would like that very much indeed. So he sent a car over to get you. Well, you weren't here, Lieutenant. You hadn't even checked in. Sir, Anthrop, is it possible that you don't know what I'm trying to do for you? Do you know how much it would have meant to your career to have met General Crow this morning? Sir, tell the truth. I really don't. You really don't what, Lieutenant? Nothing, sir. You're restricted to base until further notice. Yes, sir. General. Yes, Lieutenant. Sir, I... I wanted to go to London tonight to... to ask a girl to marry me. To marry you? That's right, sir. Wonder what? Uh, when did you meet her? Last night, sir. Listen to me, Lieutenant. There is a war going on, and you're going to play a larger and larger part in it. Now, you're not some wild-eyed PFC straight off the boat. 
You are an officer in the 918th Bombardment Group, and by all that's holy, you're going to learn to behave like one. Request refused. Dismissed. Andy. Hey, Smitty, come on, we'll miss our ride. Oh, Gotta look right for the dames. Hi, Andy. Well, you fellas going to town again tonight, huh? Sure yeah. wish you could join us, Andy. You're gonna forget what that girl of yours looks like. How long's it been? A couple of weeks? Uh, two weeks and three days. Come on, Smitty, let's go. Well, he can't keep you restricted here on the base forever. He can't. General Savage would like to uh, see you in his office, sir. Corporal, you a married man? Oh, yes, sir. Where are you from? Texas, sir. Corporal, you plan on staying in this man's army once the war's over? Oh, no, sir, not me, boy. Uh, begging the lieutenant's pardon, but... What do you plan on doing? Oh, I, I'd like to go home, sir. Maybe... Maybe buy me a nice little spread out around Abilene. Start ranching again. Raising a family. Those are the important things, aren't they? Well, they are to me, sir. Well, they are to me, too, Corporal. By golly, they are. L L Lieutenant, I I'm supposed to drive you over to the general's office now. Well, Corporal, I ain't going to the general's office. But they're going to ask me at the motor pool who took the jeep. Well, you tell them Lieutenant Lathrop took the jeep. Second Lieutenant Lathrop. Where's your daughter? My daughter? Mary! Mary! Andy! I thought you'd been restricted for a month. Listen, Mary, how long would it take a guy to get hitched in London? Hitched? Hitched! Now, you listen to me! Oh, Mr. Lean, I'm through listening to you and to everybody else. Now, I want to marry this little girl, and that's all I want, and that's what I'm going to do. Now, if you want to come visit us in Tennessee after the war's over, you're as welcome as the flowers in spring. Ain't that right? That's right. You mean you will marry me? Yes. Now, wait! Wait! wait. Stop, stop, stop. Oh. Put her down, let's get him. All right, everybody, this way, this way. Air raid. I ain't never been in an air raid before. On this side of one, I mean. Andy, you'd better be getting back to your base. Well, what about you? There's a shelter in the basement. Andy, be careful. If anything should happen to you now... I don't think I could stand it. Ain't nothing gonna happen to me. Anyway, if something should happen, the game was worth it, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Yes.
dead, Lieutenant. You can't help her now. About a half hour ago, sir. The jeep you took has been reported stolen, and you are about to be reported a war. Mary's dead. Somebody pushed a button and the bombs fell and Mary and her father and maybe even her folks and how many hundreds others are all dead. Those little puffs of smoke on the target. Now they're they're just like like thunder. Like when I was a boy. Scared me a little. But they were a long way off. And now it's not a long way off anymore. Not now. Now I've been on the receiving end of it. Now I know what happens when I push that button. What happens, Andy, is you do a job. Yeah. And I do it real good, too, don't I, General? In fact, I do it so well that you give me a medal and promote me. A reward for killing. And a victory can't be bought by good intentions and tears. It, it takes men who are willing to take responsibility to make decisions. Men who can bear the pain of their own errors. Fallible men, honest men. Men like you. Men like you, General. I'm not you. Can't you understand that? Andy, I... General. I don't blame you for what happened. I wanted to do my job. But if it means... killing girls who... considerably more than that, Andy. Now, this stinking war has gone on too long. And the sooner it's over, this one can start to grow up like a little girl and run the fields. friend I'll take you off flight status if you want before you make up your mind though you, you think it over 
And remember this, that distant thunder, that does mean something, Andy. It, it can end a war. I'm ready, sir. Sergeant, there's a child inside. Would you see that she's turned over to the civilian authorities in this area? Yes, sir. Get in, Lieutenant. The target for today will be the same as yesterday. Oh. All right, at ease. Now, I don't like going back there any more than you do, but we didn't even knock out those 88s yesterday. The flak will be heavy to intense coming off the new IP. The weather will be clear with just the three tenths scattered cumulus. Let's go to war. Sir? Oh, thanks, Jim. I'm, uh, I'm sorry I'm a little late, sir. I couldn't get my grits going. Come on, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> 